Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Teams. What I would like to cover in this session is how to create a team, how to add channels to that team, how to create a meeting using Meet Now, and how to record whatever you do on that meeting in the chat area. So first of all, I've got Teams open, and down the left-hand side, you can see there's a toolbar with some icons, which are the main elements of Teams. At the top, it's just got your general activity. You can see the activity that I've had in the last few days. Then you have a chat tab. Now this is where all the information that happens in a team is stored. So if you have a meeting and there is any chat, like on this one here, there was a chat I typed in, hi everyone. Any files for that meeting would be shown here. Any meeting notes that you take during the meeting are shown here. And if you use the whiteboard at all, it will be shown here. So I just did a bit of scribble so you can see it there. But all of this was recorded during a meeting. Now below that you've got Teams, where you can see I've already created several Teams. Now within each of these Teams you've got the option of creating channels. Now when you create a new Team you get a default channel called General. So if I just click on these little dots, you can see how you can add people to a team, add a channel, leave the channel and stuff like that. So what I will do at the bottom is I will create a new team and I shall call it, uh, I'll build it from scratch and I will call it PowerPoint. So it's going to be a public team, um, PowerPoint training and it's about PowerPoint courses. So I'll just put that in this description and then create. Now when you create a team, you get a general channel as default and then you create your own channels as you wish. First off though, it's asking us to add some people. So I'll add my team, Dave Jones, add. Tanya Saxton, add, Ashley, add, and Gary, add. So that's my team. Close that, you've added your team. Now you get this first screen that comes up with some tabs at the top, posts, files, wiki, with a plus at the end to add some more information keep on post for now because I want to add some channels. So to add a channel, you just go click on these little dots, add a channel. So we need um, examples. I'm not going to bother with the description for that. Add. Now add the channel. Now with each channel, you get these little icons which you can create for individual channels like planner, the project planner. OneNote, which is like a file of facts for those of my generation would know what that is. It's just a one place, a one one simple place to keep all your information about the team. I'm just going to add another channel. This channel wants to be training manual. Course material, it's called. Add that one. Now, in this channel, I want to get some files. So, PowerPoint training. Um, I want to upload a PowerPoint folder. So, training manuals, PowerPoint, 2010. Quite a few files there. Let's open that. Um, PowerPoint overview will do. In fact, no, let's not do that. Let's do intermediate. Let's do intro and open that one. What I should have done there was upload the whole folder. There was an option there to upload a folder. Now, once you've got a file of any type, you can add a tab for that file. So that's a PDF. So I'll click on PDF and it should show me that file and I'll give it a name. So it's PowerPoint intro. Save that, and then you should get a tab 
saying PDF intro and it should give you a preview of that document. So files you can upload. Um, then you can display certain ones. So I could do another one for the intermediate and advanced PowerPoint books. So if I go back to the Excel one that I've done already, you can see I've got an intro, the manual for the intro course, intermediate course, and the advanced course, it gives you a little preview on each one. In there also, I've uploaded all the training files. Um, train manual, should I say. And you can see that under examples, I've actually uploaded all the training files in the folder. It's quite a few Excel files there that we are used for training. And Word. I haven't uploaded the examples yet for Word, but that's what I would do there. Now, in terms of the planner, if I go into this project one, I've actually created a project plan. So what I did was clicked on planner, it loaded planner up. So I click on it. This is one I've already created. So it's a very simplistic planning tool. You basically add tasks and you put them into bucket so if you don't create a bucket which is this last one there, add to a new bucket you just have a big long task list so you create buckets to manage your tasks and then you add the tasks or drag the tasks to to each relevant bucket so i could put that one into there if i wanted to but it's excel so i'll leave it in the excel bucket so that's the planner now back down to examples and training manual so that's how you create your little team and how you start storing information now if you want to have a meeting with your team you go to your calendar and you've got two options so you could schedule a meeting as you would in outlook type in the information there and add people that you want to attend or close that down or you can click on meet now which is what i'm going to do now i'm just going to knock my camera off join it myself and what you get then on the right hand side is an option to add other people so i'm going to add dave jones he's online and i'll just click on him for video only uh, voice only sorry and i will mute his mic so there's Dave Jones. So this would be his video, but because it's me, I'm not going to look at myself twice. So there's Dave Jones, and I am now having a meeting with him. Now I can share my screen, or he can share his screen. So if I share my screen, I get this option, screen one, window one, the PowerPoint presentation so desktop is what I will do or I could share a whiteboard that's a Windows whiteboard I'll click OK to that so I'm now presenting and I can give control if I want to to Dave Jones or he can give control to me so if he requests control, he has control of my machine and I can move my mouse around and I can also do the same with him. So if I stop sharing, obviously that's the end of that. I'll just hang up as Dave Jones. So it should come back, it just should come off and it should just be me on this meeting. Now, in terms of sharing, if you've used the app, the Teams app on your desktop to get into Teams, you will be able to take control of somebody else's computer. When you ask, uh, request control, they will give you control and then you can move your mouse around on their computer. However, if you've accessed this meeting via the web app, you don't get that option. You can still share your screens but you won't be able to take control of somebody else's screen if they've joined the meeting via that way. Now, on these three little dots, you've got some more options. So we've got device settings there, which is just gonna 
talk about your speakers and give you the option to select different ones if you've got any. You've got show meeting notes. Now I said earlier that meeting notes and chat will be stored in the chat area at the top there. So if I click on take notes, it should load this up and I'll show you how this works. So I'll just call this test at the top and then type one, two, three, four. So you see how that works and you can add another section. I'll call it um, test one. One, two, three, four. So there you go. So that's going to be stored in the chat area, which I'll show you in a second. And if you do a chat, so if I click on that and I'll just type hi everyone, that also will be stored in the chat area. Now, if I go into the chat area while I'm on this meeting, I'll show you that. So there's the chat. There are no files used for this particular meeting, but the meeting notes, I did do a meeting note test, test one, two, three, four. And whiteboard, I didn't actually scribble on a whiteboard, but I can do that here now just to show you how the whiteboard works. But I, I didn't actually do that in the meeting, but this will be attached to the meeting. So there's a, there's a whiteboard. Now, if I go back into the meeting, so I'll show you some of these other things. I could record what I'm doing now, and then it will record this meeting into Microsoft Stream, which is part of Office 365, and then you can um, send this to other people so they don't miss out on what was said. Now, it's got this as well, turn incoming video off. If you've got poor Wi-Fi connection or poor uh, network connection generally, using the video is going to use up um, bandwidth, so that's an option to turn it off, which will allow the actual meeting to take place voice only, but you will get a better, a better product, especially if you're sharing screens. This will blur the background so you just see your face. Um, so if I put my video on, my camera on, and then show you that blur background. So now you just see my head as opposed to all the background. So if you've got confidential information uh, behind you, you should use this option. I'll just take the camera off again and then come out of this all together hang up so that's how you do a meeting so everything i did on that meeting is now in the chat area on one of these tabs now further down you've got calls which is just uh the way you can call people just quickly via this option a list of all the files that you've got on your team and then three little dots to get into some more apps. So OneNote and Planner I've already talked about. Planner, OneNote is just a file of facts that you can have for your team. So for each team you create, if I just go back to Teams for a second so you can see that, when you create um, a new team, you get the option of having a file of facts or Planner to use. For that team an online version of it so if you're used to using OneNote it's nowhere near as good as the full function in uh, OneNote 2016 it's a stripped down version but it's still great to use and that's about it really that's all I want to talk about in this little session a quick overview of Microsoft Teams how to create a meeting I have started doing training sessions via Teams so it is a very useful tool for people that want to work from home and basically engage with anybody in the world. So thank you for your time and I will see you on the next session.